Hi, this is Ed Datley. Thank you for watching this presentation on preparing long form fit templates for the Social Security Administration. This is a way to provide excellent representation for your clients and also help the agency at the same time. Now, in Word, go to File, SSA Docs, and DGS, which is Document Generation System. From there, we'll close up a little, go to Decisions, and you have several types. Fit favorably, fully favorable decision is the most likely. So you open that, and you're presented with a number of boxes to fill in. Start with Social Security number. It actually fills in two different places on this page. Then we go on to first and last name. This is James Q. Sample. Obviously not a real person. At that point, you have to indicate whether the claimant is a male or female and put in your information as representative. Again, this representative is not a real person, but it shows you how to fill in the form. So after you have the representative information filled in, you are asked, is this a claim on behalf of someone else? If not, then obviously it's a what most cases are on behalf of the claimant himself or herself. You fill in the judge's name, the name of the administrative law judge. And then you can either click at the bottom to next page or at the top to the tab that says decisional outcome. You're then asked, is this a disability, SSI or combined? And is it a step three or step five allowance? You choose, in this case, step five, select. And over on the right, you can see that it says DIB step five. Then what's the basis for the decision? We're saying it's a framework based on a VE, based on the actual alleged onset date, not an amended alleged onset date. At this point, we're asked, is this an AC remand or district court remand? Neither one. So we fill in the application filing date for the Title II. Title 16 is grayed out because we said this was only a Title II claim. Is it protectively filed? Yes. When is the alleged onset date? You can't fill in the amended date because you said it was the original date. So it doesn't ask you for information that you don't need. Date last insured. In this case, we're saying the date last insured is in the future, at the end of this year. And then you're asked, is this a request? When was the, the request for hearing filed? And is it timely? Yes, it was timely. So we'll check that. Then up at the top, was there an on the record decision or video hearing held? No, this was an in-person hearing. So we fill out the hearing October 10th, 2008 was the hearing. If it was a video, then we would be asked for the remote location. Instead, we're just asked where the hearing was held. We're not gonna fill that in right now and I'll show you why in a little while. You fill in a medical expert, any other witnesses? Was there an interpreter? Remember, we didn't fill in the city. At this point, we click, we're done. It says, wait a minute, you didn't fill in the city or state that the hearing was held. So you click OK and fill in. So it helps you to make sure you don't leave anything blank. It's caught that for you. You fill in Sacramento, California for the hearing. You click done. And this time, you actually have completed all the required information. You're not done filling in information yet. You've got lots more questions to answer. At this point, it starts to assemble a document. You can see kind of behind the next uh, card that you have to fill in. Was the date last insured in the past? No. Was there an impairment? Are there two or more severe impairments? Yes. And was there DA and A involved? No, there wasn't. We click no. At this point, was what is the RFC? And we're going to say less than a full range of uh, sedentary work. This individual 
is approach is advanced age with a high school education. You check those two. Was it unskilled or semi-skilled? We're going to say skilled, semi-skilled with no transferable skills because this is a person of advanced age. And it then tells you, wait a minute, here is the rule. It's section 201.08 of the medical vocational guidelines. It completed that for you. I didn't do that. At this point, it fills in some more of the, the document. At this point, you're asked, were there state agency medical opinions? Yes, there were two or more. Are they to be given significant weight? No, they aren't. Uh, why? How many contrary opinions were there? There was one from the treating doctor. There was new evidence, and the subjective complaints were not considered. Go on to a, another card or form. In this case, it's asking for the Part B uh, factors. There, that wasn't. There weren't any. There was no previous claim. There was no. We don't want CDR, a continuing disability review. We save the file with the first four letters of the last name and the last four social security numbers. So it's SAMP 6789. And at this point, you have at least a skeleton decision assembled. It has almost all of what you need, except some of the most important things, such as the uh, uh, RFC. In this case, we're being asked, was there work before the date last insured? No, there wasn't, so we clear that out. What are the impairments? This is the important stuff. What are the restrictions? And uh, you look for the all in caps with the asterisks, and that's where you get to do your skilled work that, uh, that you, you do to help the client. When those things are done, the judge's name appears, and you have a, an almost complete decision. That's what you need to do to help represent your client effectively before the Social Security Administration. Thank you for watching this presentation.